Welcome to the Celebs.com studio, sponsored by Movie Maker Magazine. Tom Colicchio, Laurie Silverbush, Christy Jacobson. Firstly, congratulations on the film's premiere last night. Is that the yeah. first time you've seen the film with an audience? Yeah. Yes, it is. How did it feel? Oh, my God. I mean, it was a bit overwhelming, but I'd say, I mean, I was blown away by the audience's response. I mean, we'd never shown it to more than a handful of people who knew us. So to show it to an audience filled with people, many of which did not know us, um, and hear their reactions was incredibly powerful. Yeah. And for you, Lori? I second everything she said, um, but we were both so excited that apparently we were very distracting to the people behind us because we kept clutching each other <laughs> and whispering and cr you know, craning our necks to see how our, our, uh, some of our subjects were there. And um, so we essentially were very distracting to the people behind us. But it was, um, it was a really powerful moment, and it, it felt uh, right. The well, audience got it. Yeah. Why, why represent the food insecure? Why represent this story? Well, for one thing, uh, nobody else is. No one's talking about it. And it's huge, and it's pervasive, and it's everywhere in the wealthiest nation on earth. So uh, we, I had a personal experience with a young girl who was going hungry that I was mentoring, kind of like a big sister. And I couldn't believe the extent to which it was messing up her life. Um, the principal of her school actually called to tell me that she was scavenging for food uh, and it was so shocking and horrible. Um, I knew people went hungry because Tom, my husband, has been raising uh, money for hunger charities for years and years and yet the problem's just been growing worse and um, when it touched me in such a personal way, I reached out to Christy, who's a, a really respected documentary filmmaker, and said, what do you think? Should we look into this? And um, yeah, I think that we just discovered how pervasive it is and thought, how could we not tell this story? Nobody knows about it. And also, it's fixable. That's another big reason to tell the story. There's something we can do about it in the present, in this moment. We can fix this. So who better, we hope, to tell the story than us? Well, that's the thing that struck me is how minuscule an amount of money it seems to be to fix this problem it, compared to how much money we, th the, we, the government, the U.S., throw at other things. It's being penny-wise and pound foolish. Yeah, and Tom, you mentioned, obviously, the war in Afghanistan, but that's like an ex possibly an even more extreme example than even needs to be said. But even this, the subsidies and things like that, I mean, there's money that should be going here. Well, it should be, but you know, I, I think you have to ask yourself as a nation, what do we care about? What, what's really important? Um, uh, if, if I think it was Ronald Reagan who said, if one person is, is hungry, that means you know we're, do, we're not doing our job. And uh, you know, for again, for 25 years of raising money and working with various organizations to help alleviate hunger, um, and these organizations are doing amazing work. Um, but it's it's not working. And, is, and is, it, it's just growing. The problem just keeps getting bigger. Is Colicchio and Sons your um, like an outlet or something? I saw a, a, a credit. It's a restaurant. A click on Sons is the restaurant. Yeah, I have a few restaurants, yeah. No, I have a lot of yeah. Um, but, um, you know, this, I mean, sort of what I do in my restaurants and what I do on TV is, is very different. This is, is much more emotionally connected to this. But do chefs need to be educated as well? I mean, No, no, chefs, you know, chefs are really on the forefront of this, a lot of chefs. Um, in fact, you know, 30 years ago, uh, when Billy Shore, who was the founder of Share Our Strength, um, sort of reached out to the restaurant industry as a whole, um, because we all feel collectively, and I speak for, for many chefs, um, that what we do, um, we feed people who can afford it, they come into our restaurants, but on some level we feel that, that nutrition and food and, 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 and being able to obtain uh, food is a basic right that everybody should have access to and it should be affordable. Was food always going to be a career for you? Always, yeah. yeah. I mean, since I started cooking when I was about 13. Yeah. Um, how's this film changed you, Laurie? How has it changed me? Um, I think every project you do as a filmmaker, you grow uh, and you learn things about yourself you didn't even know. Um, I have been really humbled by the people that I've met and the people that we, we have in the film. Um, and it got me looking at people very differently because anyone could either be going through this now or have possibly may have known hunger in the past. So I don't take it for granted that we're all well fed. Um, this hides in plain sight, as, uh, as other people have said. And you know, you can be talking to someone who experienced the shame and deprivation in childhood, and they're walking around with it every day. You know, so it's grown my awareness for, for one thing. Even on the micro level, I mean, now the film goes out in the world and has an ability to make a, a macro change. But on a micro level, the people that are in the film has the filming itself led to their situation becoming better. 
Um, I think that in some, the, the simplest answer is yes, because giving the people in the film a voice, I think, makes their situation better mm -hmm. in some ways. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we I, I, do, I don't think that it, it we don't know yet, because it's not out there beside that, but having people listen and having people really care, and I'd say that, you know, we met so many incredible people um, who really humbled us, and giving them a voice, I think, we all benefit from. Yeah, obviously Jeff Bridges has been trying to do stuff for a long time mm -hmm. yeah. and must welcome this opportunity to extend that voice he as well. He actually called us, which <laughs> was mind-blowing. Not uh, his agent, personally called. He personally picked up the phone and called the receptionist at Participant Media, which is uh, our, our producing partner on this film, and said, I heard you guys are making a film about hunger and what can I do? Because he's been fighting the good fight on this for 30 years and although many celebrities lend their names, he knows what's going on and he understands the need for systemic change. So he was delighted to uh, to come on board and we had a great interview with him. It was so much fun. Uh, and obviously he and T-Bone Burnett go way back. Is that how he's, like how T-Bone got involved as well through Jeff or? You know, T-Bone had been, had worked on a concert tour with Participant on a previous documentary of theirs. And, and ultimately just basically said, you know, I would love to do the score for this film. And I think that is how Jeff ultimately heard about the film. But I mean, working with the two of them in the two different environments, the interview with Jeff, and then creating the score and working with T-Bone was, talk about mind-blowing. That was an incredible experience, and we hope something that really, um, you know, brings the film to just a, another level in terms of its, cin its cinematic qualities. Well, Jeff was saying that if this happened in any other country, it would be at war, and then the music's done by a band called The Civil Wars, Absolutely. and it's almost like it's almost too good to be true in affiliation there. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, as Jeff says in the film, um, you know, in many ways the film is about patriotism, and, you know, we, we're, we've got this sort of internal war going on. We're trying to find our compass, find our north, and... Uh, yeah, it all feels like there was a lot of great synergy in the making of this film that we, we hope the issue and the people in the film will benefit from. And I think to add to that, you know, when we started making this film, we were trying to get people to listen. And in the, in the three years since, the, since we began, the world has started to pay attention. We know people love food. They tune into shows like Top Chef. People feel very connected to food. But there's a lot of people out there who don't have those family memories around the table, who don't get to experience the joys and the, and the pleasures of it, and, uh, and yet we all need it. We all have that in common. We have found that uh, at every juncture, when we reached out to people, they, they, we got told yes everywhere. What can we do to help? How can we get this out there? And uh, we're still getting told yes, which is great. And, and I mean, a lot of people slam the government for outsourcing programs like the arts and things like this, but food, I mean, is there anything more of a basic human right that could be <laughs> that could no. be fought for? No, it's really not. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think the, the you know the issue. I think this is why this this film is so important and needs to be seen is because it affects really everyone. Um, you know, this could be your neighbor. This could be your uh, classmate of your of your kid who's in school, um, who because they're hungry they're actually taking more of the teacher's resources than, than your son needs, our, our, our can get. So this affects so many people. This could be someone that you grew up with who was in a bad situation. And so, you know, when you think of one in six Americans, so if you're on the subway in New York City, someone very close to you is hungry. Right. And it's just not a good, it's not a good feeling. Um, and, and, I, and I think that the stories need to be told. I think, you know, Lori and Chrissy just did an amazing job. You know, you can just throw a bunch of statistics out there and kind of glaze over and go, ah, it's not happening, forget it, I don't believe it. And you hear 50 million Americans don't believe it. But you see the stories, and you see the characters, and, and it just comes to life, and you know, the two of them did such an amazing job. Um, I think showing um, the difficulties that, that people have um, in, in finding food. And so it's, it's not... Uh, it's not this abstract anymore. How do we get this film not just seen by people who want to make a difference, but by the people who usually turn a, turn a blind eye at these problems? Well, I think it's a great question, and I think that there might have been a difficulty in that at one point, but today, the, uh, the economics of this country, the, the environment, it's a tough, m many, many people are one health complication away from hunger or one uh, unpaid mortgage payment away from not being able to put food on the table. It is no longer the other. And that was one of the biggest surprises for us in making this film, is just how many people that don't look like what you think, don't sound like what you think. It is not an urban problem, it's an everywhere problem. There's not a county in this nation 
that doesn't deal with this. So it's rural, it's suburban. Uh, that was the biggest surprise. And I think that people, people are starting to recognize that we're all in this together. I think, you know? I think also that you know, people go to the movies often to go on a journey, to experience a world other than the one that they know. And um, you know, that's kind of what this film provides. You know, we, in the making of the film, made a lot of discoveries and grew and changed and were affected and impacted. And we hope that this film will have that effect on audiences. Not to mention, by the way, T-Bone Burnett's music score and the Civil Wars. <laughs> so finally, um, if someone who either has seen the film or hasn't seen the film, what's the next step? What's the ideal response for someone sitting in that audience? What's the ideal thing for them to come out of that theater Tell doing? 10 friends. Tell them to tell 10 friends. Every single feeding program in this country, with maybe the exception of food stamps, came about because the public demanded it. And if you tell 10 people, and they tell 10 people, if you tweet, you like us on Facebook, you pay attention, you will find yourself engaged. And then if you go to takepart.com, which is the website, that slash Finding North, there's solutions, there's ways you can engage that, that you won't even break a sweat and you'll make a huge difference. But I think also, as she said at the beginning, I mean, awareness is the first step and talking mm -hmm. about it. So go see the film. That's the <laughs> no. first thing you do. Go see it. Very cool. And once you've seen it, talk about it. Right. Christy, Laurie, Tom, thanks very much for joining us for thanks. a few minutes. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.